using this text because um, it's not going to be included on Good Friday. And I wanted to lift up this scene. So, but just for your information, let's just walk through. I've got a little thing that um, came across my Facebook feed that explains what happens every day of Holy Week. So today's Palm Sunday and Jesus entered Jerusalem. Holy Monday, remember he went into the temple and freed the animals and cleansed the temple of the money changers on Monday. Tuesday, he taught at the temple. Wednesday, a disciple named Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus for pieces of silver. So before the, good, the Thursday meal together, he had already been paid to give up Jesus. Thursday was the, Maundy Thursday was the last supper with disciples and Jesus washed their feet. Good Friday was Jesus' crucifixion and darkness covered the whole earth. On Holy Saturday, Jesus rested in the tomb. And then on Resurrection Sunday, Jesus is risen. Alleluia. And it's interesting, in the Catholic tradition, they have what they call an Easter vigil. And when, on Saturday, they have um, a, a big, cel uh, well, it's not really a celebration, it's pretty somber, until midnight strikes. And that's the first minute of Resurrection Sunday. And they have a celebration, and they baptize their new converts on Easter Sunday. So um, this is a big deal around the world that Christians are celebrating. And I want to go to this text um, that happened during the crucifixion. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The prayer of a dying thief is our prayer today. We remember Jesus' death. We remember that it should be our death, not his. And so, like this thief, we can pray this heartfelt prayer, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Martin Luther, who started the, press, the Protestant Revo Revolution, Revolution, Reformation, it was a revolution, wrote about Jesus' death on the cross. How to think about it, how to pray about it, the story of Jesus' suffering. And one of the things that Luther lifted up so much about meditating on this story was the fact that it took place for you and me. For us, for our sins. He reminds us that Jesus was nailed to the cross. He suffered because of us, and we are the reason he died. Now, that was pretty, um, pretty radical when Luther first spoke and wrote those words. And it's true. It is the most important truth. Not that just God suffered and died, his son suffered and died, but that he suffered and died for me and you. And we may wish there was another way, but there was not. His death was necessary. So the way we meditate or think about this for ourselves can be life-changing. We are just like the soldiers that stood at the foot of the cross and mocked Jesus. We are like Peter. We are Peter who denied Jesus. We are Judas who betrayed Jesus. We are the people who blamed the death of an innocent man on somebody else. We are, although we are, really the blame for our innocent Savior's death. Jesus, remember us. Jesus, remember us when you come into your kingdom. Yeah, we're, we're Peter, we're the soldiers, we're Judas, but we are also this repentant thief. 
who hung on the cross next to Jesus. This is what we call a deathbed confession. And just so you know, grace is equal. If you made a a confession of Christ at age six or at death door at 66. Doesn't seem fair, but it is equal. We are the thief dying, realizing that the person hanging next to him offers hope that nothing he's been able to find up to that point could. And so he turns to Jesus as both are dying and places his trust in Jesus in a way that I find remarkable. He says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And we say these words too. Every Sunday we come to church to place our faith and trust in Jesus. We gather today as we gather every week to acknowledge our sin, to admit that we are the crowd demanding that Jesus be crucified. And we are the one who betrayed him and too often the one who denies in knowing him. But we are also gathered to repent every Sunday, to turn from our sin and to turn to Jesus and to ask him to remember us. We are the repentant sinner on the cross next to Jesus. We are saying with our dying breath, just like this man, Jesus, remember us when you come into your kingdom. Now, there is salvation at that moment of acknowledgement and inviting Jesus into our hearts, but we don't cease sinning. And so we continue every day to confess and repent on this side of eternity until we are as much like Jesus as we can, we graduate into his presence. Sometimes our faith is weak. Richard John Newhouse wrote a chapter to this tender exchange between Jesus and the thief. He says, Christians are those who, like the thief on the cross, have turned to Jesus with faith that is more like a desperate hope. Faith that is more like a desperate hope. And in listening to his response, have found the faith that moves mountains. When our faith is weak, when we are assailed by contradictions and doubts, when we are tempted to look at our faith, to worry about our faith, to try to work up more faith, at such times we must not look to our faith, but look to him, look to him, listen to him, and faith will take care of itself. Have you ever believed for somebody else? Somebody will say, I just don't have the faith. Well, let me have the faith for you in your weakness. Let me pray for you and let me help carry you. And that is what Jesus does for us in our weakness. Can you imagine a more weak place than to be crucified on a, on a cross as a thief? Guilty thief. But that desperate hope bubbled to the surface. Could he have been more hopeless? Oh my goodness, he was there on the cross and he was hours, minutes maybe from death and he recognized what Jesus had to offer. The other man on the cross, the other criminal did not or at least as far as we know, he didn't. And that little bit of faith combined and mixed with Jesus is enough to move mountains. Sing that chorus. We'll sing it without the piano. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into one more time jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom 
Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So what does this faith look like every day? What difference does it make in our story? How do we live it out at home, at school, at work, in daily life? I want you to imagine with me something that you may have never thought about before. What if, what if instead of being promised paradise and dying in a few minutes, what if the thief at that point had been let down from the cross? What if? What would he do with his life? Well, the reality is, each and every one of us has been up on the cross ready to be crucified for our sins, but because of Jesus, we have been let down. What are we going to do with that wonderful life? What do we do with this bonus we don't deserve and didn't expect? This is true for us as much as it is as it is for him. We have been let down from the cross. We have been given this unexpected and undeserved forgiveness. Life is a gift and the forgiveness forgiven life is grace filled. It's precious and it's not meant to be wasted. Imagine if that thief was let down. I imagine him running to find other believers, getting baptized, turning his life around. I imagine him giving up his life of crime. I imagine him finding work, maybe falling in love and having children. I imagine him getting active in his church. I imagine him sharing what he has with the poor. I imagine him being generous with his time and serving others, not worried too much about all the things that are are out there but worrying about what God would have him do and then going to bed at night with a grateful heart. I imagine him remembering his darker moments, those dreadful hours on the cross, his desperate prayer, the shocking answer, knowing even when life was throwing its punches that paradise awaited him, but not being in a hurry to get there because Each moment of every day was an opportunity to say thank you to his Savior with his every breath. Imagine him sharing his story with anyone who would listen. The story of him being saved by his Savior. I imagine him telling his friends, his family, his children, his grandchildren. And I imagine them asking, share your story again, Grandpa. This would have been the defining moment in his life. And so it is ours. When we died to ourselves, Jesus gave us new life. We are the thief and we have been let down from the cross. What will we do with this precious new life? So we're here today to remember what happened on that cross outside of Jerusalem. We're here not just to wave our palms, but to meditate on the passion or the crucifixion of our Lord, to see ourselves in it, to see ourselves in the crowd, the soldiers in Peter, in Judas, and in that thief on the cross next to Jesus. It means... That we are the ones saying with our dying breath, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And it's we or us that gets to hear back from Jesus. Today, you will be with me in paradise. That is our promise for all who look to Jesus We remember this great gift throughout the week we call holy. Until next Sunday when we gather here again to join those first disciples who found that empty tomb. And to celebrate the day when the doors to paradise were flung open 
never to be closed again. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you pray with me as Eva comes? God, Jesus, remember us. Jesus, remember us when you come into your kingdom. We are that thief, but unlike that thief, we were let down. Jesus took our place. We are covered by his blood, forgiven and given new life. Praise be to God. We thank you, God, for that today, and we just offer ourselves up. We offer ourselves up to be poured out on your behalf. In Jesus' powerful name, amen.